everybody, Josh Jr. here for another in-shop adventure. We are going to debunk a myth. I keep reading online where you have to burnish your rocks. And let me put a few things up here on the screen about burnishing. So, I have been one that I do not burnish my rocks. I do not send them through a extended cleaning cycle. Basically, that's what it is in my world. But I do not do a burnishing cycle. Coming out of the rotaries, I don't even clean them, other than rinsing them off with water pressure. And you've seen that on many of my videos. So, the claim is, after the rocks are dirty, and you could tell that because on how dirty the water is when it comes out. So what we're going to do is that we're going to make sure that we have a bunch of clean rocks here. Then we're going to put in borax with water. And then I'm going to roll this for several hours and then we're going to look at something. So we have a fairly clean rag here. And we're going to make sure that these rocks are clean. Now some of the people say that it gets the grit out of areas of the cracks. See like for this spot right here. There could be embedded grit. That's what some people that's what some people claim. Uh, water pressure fixes that problem easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue to go through here and clean or wipe off these rocks. Just so you can see that there's no tomfoolery going on here. Nothing shady. Everything's legit. And mind you, these were completed with 60-90 grit. So there's a, a lot of people saying that you need, to, you need to burnish these. Now I also know that people want to use burnishing at the very end of the process. And their claim is that it makes your rocks even shinier. Well, we're going to talk about that as well. We'll be doing an example because they're doing it in a rotary and I don't use a rotary for my final process. I do, you know it. If you don't, I have videos on it. Lots of them. Well, that's going to be pretty once it's polished. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on doing this and then we'll come back once I have this barrel full. Okay, we've gone through the process of getting all of these taken care of. That's an interesting set of patterns on that one. So this is what we're going to use. So we're going to add, and yes, it's in a creamer container. But these creamer containers are the best thing for storage of uh, your dry, of your dry items such as grit and polish and borax. One, two, three, four. Good enough. 
And then we're going to go ahead and fill this up. Get the lid put on it. And we're going to roll this for several hours. Then we're going to empty this into a clean white bucket. So we can see what's going on. Oh, well, let me forget to tell you too. After cleaning all of those, there's the rag. A little bit of smudge on it right there. So we're going to do this. We're going to put this on the QT12 because my beast is not designed to run just one barrel. It's designed to run several. And in several hours, we'll come back. And if you're curious, there's the time. Okay, I'm gonna go put this on the barrel on the machine and start rolling. Okay, there it's rolling for you guys, and we're gonna see what the result is gonna be. Okay, let's see how long that's been rolling. So, okay everybody, let's see how long this thing's been rolling so far. So, it's basically five hours. So what we're going to do, is we're going to open this up. I have a clean bucket to put it in. Off. We're going to take a look at this here. Huh, it is cloudy. Huh. So, this is going to be pretty much in your face on this, and I apologize for that. So, this is going to be closer than I like things to be. But we will go ahead and dump this in here. in here. Now, oh, but you, I said the rocks were clean, but why is it so dirty? Huh? I know why. But do you? It's obvious to me. What happens when you have two rocks rub against each other? You get a little bit of stuff off of it. So what do you think happens when rocks rub up against each other continuously? They're going to wear down and you're going to get that dirty water. So anytime you have somebody say, you need to burnish because your rocks are dirty after you've cleaned them you've proven that they've been cleaned. That just shows you that most people don't who have that methodology or philosophy really don't know what they're talking about. That's not from grit. That's not from stuck grit. That's not from grit stuck in cracks because I specifically picked this batch because there is no cracks in it. This is all solid material. This is part of my premium rocks for my premium polish that I do. So, 
If you want to continue to burnish your rocks, go ahead. That's your choice, your waste of time. See, this one here was never cracked. So this one here is now cracked because of the burnishing process. That's something else you got to pay attention to. Okay, so there we go. Those who say that you must burnish between grit polishes to clean the rocks thoroughly, I have a different opinion. And I can I've produced results on my opinion. Because remember, that's the rag I used. But yet I still got that because of the rocks wearing on each other. I mean look how look at that. That's just basically from the rocks wearing on each other. This is a nice patch. So with that, we're going to end this one right here. Short, sweet, to the point. Uh, we're going to be doing other videos like this here where I hear a myth or a theory out there. And I'm going to do something to debunk it in the rock hounding and lapidary world. And if I hear a myth or theory, and I think that's weird or odd, and if I've got the ability to duplicate it, I will duplicate it. It might be a good idea. It might not be. So, for now, just remember, everyone's life's an adventure. And there is mine debunking, debunking the burnishing of rocks myth. This is the Adventures of Josh Jr. Have a good one, everybody. See ya!